What's going on guys? So this is my first time ever filming like a landscape video, but it's probably my most requested video ever. And it's going to be long enough that I feel like it makes sense to post it in this format. So as you may know, much of my content um, revolves around accessing the dark web. So I wanted to make a tutorial on how to safely and effectively do just that. I'm going to explain how to do it on both Mac and PC. First, the really simple way, and then the more advanced way if you're trying to be more anonymous. I'll also try to provide as many tips and tricks along the way as I can, as well as some starting points for if you want to explore the dark web a little bit more. But first things first, um, I want to explain a little bit about why one might want to access the dark web. First of all, a couple misconceptions. Um, accessing the dark web is actually completely legal. Um, in fact, one of the biggest donators towards the Tor project is the U.S. government because a lot of government agencies use Tor to anonymously communicate with informants in other countries. That doesn't mean they're like monitoring everything. A lot of people think it does. That's, I guess, up to you to decide. But um, really what it means is that it's a tool um, with millions of dollars invested in it to promote anonymity and privacy. I'm super passionate about personal freedom. Um, I think politically, I probably would identify myself as a libertarian. Um, and that's why I think these tools protect ourselves from data collection from both um, big corporations and the government are really, really important and beneficial towards society. Just like the regular Internet, there is bad stuff on the dark web. Um, but if you're careful and you don't click on any links that you don't know and um, you're cautious about who you trust, um, you can stay very safe. And I really view it as kind of like a survival skill in case one day. Um, there was a scenario that you needed to access information that was perhaps being suppressed by um, your government or outside agencies. I will make a video on how to use I2P, which is another type of dark net. This video primarily will focus on Tor. Um, for the advanced strategies, there's really um, two that are regarded as kind of the most secure methods. One is Tails and one is Hunix. I'll be instructing on how to set up Tails because I think it's a bit easier for most people. So first things first, um, what is the dark web? A lot of people use the analogy of an iceberg when they're speaking about the dark web. Um, basically, the surface web is everything that you can access um, through a browser. So that would be like uh, anything you could Google or look up. Um, the deep web is usually identified as things that you need special permission to access. That's so not accessible by a browser. This would be like your bank account where you need your password to access it. The dark web requires special software to access. In the case of Onion websites, which are websites on the dark web, the software you need is the Onion Router um, or Tor Browser. The way Tor keeps your browsing anonymous is with multiple layers of encryption. That's why it's called the Onion Router, because each layer of encryption is like a layer of an onion. So when you create a request from your device, um, it's encrypted several times and sent to multiple routers along the way. Each router decrypts a layer of that encryption and then passes it along. Um, that way, the website doesn't really know where the request is coming from. Um, and anyone along the way can't really see who the request is coming from or where it's going. Um, this makes it very, very private. Um, and it's kind of similar to using several VPNs at once. A lot of people think that by using a VPN on top of Tor, um, they're actually making their traffic more secure. But um, as is stated in the Tor docs, this actually makes your traffic less secure and can compromise you. If you're worried about hiding the fact that you're downloading Tor, um, that would be a reason to use a VPN, but not while you're using it. If you want to hide your traffic to a Tor node from your ISP, you can use something called a Tor bridge, which I'll talk about set up, uh, setting up later in this video. Okay, so first of all, if you're really not that concerned with privacy. You just want to check out the dark web. Um, here's the quickest and easiest way to do it, and it is very quick and very easy. So quite literally, go to your browser of choice and search Tor, then click their first result, which should be Tor Project. Once that loads up, you're going to scroll to download Tor Browser, then you're just going to select your operating system. So I'm on Windows right now. I would click Windows, but obviously for Mac or Linux, you know what to do. Notice um, they have an Android program as well, which is really, really cool. So you can do it directly from your phone. Um, their iOS, there are iOS apps um, that aren't created by the Tor project, but they're created by people who work closely with the Tor project. The one problem with that is iOS apps have to use Webpack, um, which can create some issues in terms of an anonymity, but they can access to dark. As another side note, if you're ever really, really concerned with being anonymous, 
one of the best ways to access the dark web would be to buy a like burner Android pay as you go phone in cash at like a Walmart or something like that, then download the Tor app on there. Um, so you're not really associated with a Wi-Fi network. Okay, so this is what the Tor application looks like when you boot it up. To connect to Tor straight away, you can just kick, click connect. Um, it usually takes a little while. Um, like I said, this won't hide your connection from your ISP, but if you're worried about that, I can, I'll show how to set up a bridge later in this video. Um, so Tor by default uses DuckDuckGo um, because you can search for onion links using it. I'm gonna to test out our connection, go to a website called dark.fail, um, which shows the kind of status of many sites on the dark web, and they actually have an onion site available. So if we click that link up there, um, we will be brought to the Onion version, which means we're successfully connected to the dark web. Um, so on this site, it's kind of like a directory of different marketplaces and um, useful sites on the dark web. Um, but yeah, this is kind of, I view this as kind of the homepage to the dark web. Over in the settings, um, there are a couple different levels of safety. I typically use standard, but obviously um, there are ways to be more careful. You also want to be remember to disable JavaScript for the websites that you're accessing, um, as that can be a problem. While we're here, here's another um, useful website on the dark web that indexes a lot of different pages. Um, for instance, so like you can scroll through here and find a bunch of different sites. Um, let me just find one that would be, so this is like literally, this is an example of why the dark web isn't that bad. A lot of websites have like BC, BBC has uh, <laughs> has a site on the dark web um, so that people in countries where it's censored can still watch the news through there. So if I go to BBC, um, from Tor Taxi, it will load that up. So Tor Taxi is really just like another kind of list and you, and you get to that just by going to Tor.Taxi. Um, but yeah, so this is, the uh, BBC as access through Tor. Um, it's exactly the same. Just maybe a little less sensitive depending on where you are. Okay, so that is the easiest way to access the dark web. Um, you download Tor browser and that works on Mac or PC, uh, kind of like right out of the box. Um, the problem with that is if there is a vulnerability in Tor um, and your Tor browser is compromised, that will give a hacker, whoever, um, direct access to your machine. Some people get around this by running it in a virtual machine, um, but there's a way that's even more secure, um, which I'll show right now. So to reach the site for this um, strategy, you wanna go to, tail, you wanna search Tails Boehm and go to tails.boehm.org um, right here, and that should bring you to this page. So what Tails is, is a live boot version of Linux um, that routes all its connections through Tor. Um, so any um, connection that it makes to the internet is routed through Tor. And what's really cool is as soon as you unplug the USB, everything is deleted. It's reset back to exactly how it was before. And the entire kind of um, operating system or a computer that's running is running off that USB stick. So basically when you unplug it, there's no trace of what you did on your local machine, at least. It's pretty easy to set up. Um, basically what you want to do is go to install Tails. Um, for me, obviously, I'm going to go Windows and then download Tails right here. So click that and that will... So I click that and that will start the download process. What I want to do is scroll up right here where it says download Belina Etcher, click that, and then click right here, download Belina Etcher for Windows. Like I said, you will need a live USB for this video. You can get them on Amazon for like three, four bucks. But basically here's what you wanna do. You wanna plug that USB into your computer. Then you wanna open the Belina Etcher file that you just downloaded. Um, go flash from file, then select the file that you just downloaded right here, select the target, select the USB stick that you just plugged in, and then click flash. Everything so far that I've shown is exactly the same on Mac. Um, the part that's gonna be a little different is um, making that USB stick bootable. Once it's done flashing, it will say validating, 
And then when it's done with that, it will say flash complete. So we're ready to boot up test. Okay, obviously, um, because I'm doing it on my computer, I'm not gonna be able to screen record, so I'm gonna flip over to the phone. Okay, so I have the USB plugged in that we just flashed. Now what I'm gonna do is go to the start menu, um, hold shift, click power, and then click restart. Um, what that will do is bring me to this screen. Then when my computer starts up, it will bring me to this screen, and I will go use a um, USB drive, click that, and then select um, the USB that we just plugged in right here. And as you can see, we now get this nice little window um, where we can boot Tails. So this is the Tails logo, um, as you can see here. As you can see, it says booting Tails up top. Um, this is what it looks like as it goes through everything. My computer and monitor and keyboard are all freaking out. It takes a little bit. And then when it loads, we get this right here, which is welcome to Tails. Um, so we can just click start Tails up here and then it will boot everything up. You'll have to set up your Tor connection and to do that, you'll need to connect to your Wi-Fi, but it's pretty straightforward. Okay, like I said, the boot order stuff for the Mac is a lot easier. Um, basically what you wanna do, I have the USB plugged in with Tails on it already. You wanna go and click restart. And then when you hear the sound, hold the option E down. Um, it'll take a second to load, but then when it does, you want to go over to the F1 boot right there, hit enter, and then it will bring you to Tails. I don't know if you can see that, um, but yeah, now it's booting up. You can see the Tails logo right there. This is what Tails looks like when it's all booted up. I, off the top of my head, I think it's built on Debian, um, but yeah, to start it up, basically you just click start Tails, and that will open Tails on the back. To get a Tor bridge, um, when you're connecting to Tor, you can either, either go to like a uh, custom configuration and select um, like a new bridge or something, or you can go to, um, you can email bridges at torproject.org right here um, from an email or rise up email address, and they will reply um, with three custom bridges that you can use for your own personal use. Um, and they'll be unique, so you don't have to worry about them getting blacklisted. So just a couple more things. First of all, the Wi-Fi driver um, isn't always, on Tails, isn't always compatible with Mac. Um, so sometimes you'll need to get either a um, Wi-Fi connected USB stick. You can get one um, on Amazon. I'll link it in the description um, for like three or four bucks, I think. Or you can use your phone carrier. Um, and plug your phone in to your computer with USB and then tether and it will be able to access the internet that way. Um, a couple other things. This video is for educational purposes and I really encourage you to do all your research and make sure you're very aware of how the technology works before you attempt to use it. Don't buy anything on the dark web. Almost everything on there is scams. Don't click any links that you are not certain where they're headed. Um, really don't trust anyone you meet on there or any information you find on there. Um, yeah, take everything with a huge grain of salt. Okay, um, that's everything. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, please use this technology wisely, safely, and legally to make the world a better place. Have a good one.